starting. Sorry if I'm not talking during the show. shaking as well guys. Oh man. I wish I had an actual camera but I have to use an iPhone right now. We have 
have five males and six females, and they range in age all the way from our baby killer whale, Amaya, who is only 17 months old, all the way up to Corky, who is 52 years old. Let me give her a big
a big jump like that is called a breach. They're making a sound on top of the water. Oh, when a whale uses their body to salt the surface, they're creating commotion, both above and below the surface. Now this could be maybe to show a little excitement, to display a little power, or to just get the attention of other whales. Now, some of you may have heard of Kalia's calf, Amaya. In fact, our SeaWorld social media fans actually help us to name her. Here at SeaWorld, we've seen newborn calves rely on their mothers for everything, from the very first moments of birth. As a calf grows and gains some independence, it is looked after by other whales in the pod, too. They help the mother protect the calf, teach it survival skills, and show the calf how to walk and play. Killer whales live in family-like groups known as pods. Like human families, their pods can range in size, from just a handful of whales up to a few dozen. Wow, that's a lot of questions. But believe it or not, we get them here every day. We sure do. Killer whales communicate using all sorts of sounds. Let's listen. to communicate with each other. But do you know how we communicate with them? Through hand signals, that's right. Here at SeaWorld, we communicate with our whales, and we want to make sure that the next generation can do the same. Now up next is my favorite part of the show. We have some new special friends down at the glass. They're going to show us how we communicate with the whales using signals just a little bit more. So over on my left, we've got Haley. He's allowing her to touch his tail flutes. 
You can even see where those veins are. Their veins actually run very shallow to the skin and the tail flip, so this is the best area to collect that blood sample. Great job, Ike. Now the slide out behaviors that you see throughout the shows is more than an excellent photo opportunity. This is a way for us to obtain an accurate weight on our whales. We have a giant scale in one of our back pools that the whales can slide up on, just like you see Corky showing off here. Now we track their weight to make sure the whales are healthy and their crabs are growing healthy. The higher energy behaviors, such as fast swims and bridges, are dangerous to the whales throughout the ocean, as well as right here at Sea World. Now if you focus your attention out to the center of the pool, here it comes high. Autumn, I know that our guests also wonder, how much does a killer whale need to eat in order to stay healthy? Well, just like us, each killer whale has different dietary needs. For instance, our baby Amaya, who still nurses from her mother, eats right around 30 pounds of fish a day. Porky, a 52-year-old female, who weighs right around 8,500 pounds, eats about 160 pounds of fish a day. It's important to note the whales get all of their food, no matter what they do, each and every day. And because we've been able to determine how much killer whales eat at different stages throughout their life, researchers in the field are able to use this information to determine if ocean habitats are healthy enough for killer whale populations to thrive. And this kind of information is invaluable. You know, food, exercise, and physical smart veterinarians aren't all our killer whales eat. Each animal's well-being is so important to us. We want to make sure their minds are stimulated and challenged too. This type of mental stimulation and enrichment comes through learning, interaction, and play. If you focus your attention up to the street, you can see kelp, and even giant killer whale toys that we can throw in the pool. We can even give them jello. That's a really fun type of treat. Toys. And we both Jen and Lindy, they're hanging out with Ike and Corky, maybe giving some treats over here playing games with our animals, one of the coolest things about being a trainer is being able to build a relationship with these animals. And each animal is so different, different personalities and learning levels. So spending time with them, playing games, interacting, these are all ways that you build a relationship just like you would with your human friends. Now with all the toys and games that we provide, the best enrichment still seems to be social interaction with other whales and our team of experienced trainers. All right, here's another question for all the kids out there. They want to know who would win if a killer whale squared off for the great white shark. No. How many of you think the great white shark would win? It wouldn't win. How many of you think the killer whale would win? Yeah, that's right, the killer whale. You see, a great white shark hunts alone, while a killer whale hunts in a pod, so it's not even a competition. In fact, killer whales have even been known to hunt blue whales. Do you know how big a blue whale is? At over 80 feet, it is the largest animal to have ever existed on the planet. But killer whales can have these huge animals because they coordinate, collaborate, and cooperate. They work together as a team to overcome challenges much bigger than themselves. You know, I bet we could overcome the challenges that our ocean faces if we collaborated like the killer whales. If we work together like they do, we could change the fate of our ocean and even our world. All right, here's some more questions. And these are the common ones that always come in, so here we go. First one, why do some dorsal fins curve? This is a great question. Dorsal fins do not have any skeletal support, such as bones or cartilage, to support their height and weight. They're made up completely of connective tissue. If an animal spends more time in the surface of the water, it's likely that the connective tissue in their fin will weaken, causing their fin to bend. We occasionally see curved dorsal fins in the wild and at sea world. Next question, how fast can they swim? Well, depending on their body weight, killer whales can swim up to 30 miles per hour. Check it out. Oh, crap. All right, next question. Oh, how much water can their tails splash? Well, oh, tail, no. or flukes as they're called, can fling a whole lot of water about halfway up these stands. <laughs> Last one. If all the whales splash all at once, could they get the whole audience wet? Well, 
maybe not the whole audience. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was Oh, that's cool. Ha <laughs> ha.